Okay, well, good afternoon, evening, morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Knit State of Mind podcast. Today is Saturday, October 30th, Mm -hmm. 2021. Uh, 2021. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's um, do-do-do-do-do. Episode 29. Episode 29. We just looked it up. And (laughs) yes, yes, yes. I'm Wanda. I'm Heather. And I guess you can find me on Ravelry at Wadi Wat and Instagram, Knit State of Mind. And I'm Heather T on Ravelry. Um, Yeah, so we're back. It's been about a month, I think. I just realized, so this usually feels so organic. But it's been a while, yeah. So I'm like, okay, what do we do here? Yeah. Um, but we are back, and we're in person. Yay! Um, happy to share some of our knits with you and with mm-hmm. each other. So um, I have whips. I don't. Well, I guess this is a finished That's object. That's a finished object. Yeah. And I have several finished objects actually, because I've been working on finishing some stuff. So. So it should be a fun one. Yeah. I can't wait to see what Heather has to share. I only know I know about yeah. this one. So, let's get Spoiler into it. Alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I go first? Because I'm getting hot. Yes. Please. Okay. Go for it. Uh, so this is my half and half triangle wrap. Um, the Pearl Soho pattern. It's as fun to knit as everyone else says it is. So (laughs) I know these are sweeping the nation. Um, but anyways, this is my half and half triangle wrap, um, from Pearl Soho. I did knit it with linen quill and my two colors, the darker red is rhubarb. Um, and the pink is pink pop. Um, so yeah, it was super fun to knit. It took me about two and a little tiny bit more skeins of each color. Um, And I did wrap and turn short rows, just like in the pattern. Um, And it's very, very large (laughs) when it's not folded up. Um, I actually think this would make a really nice like blanket potentially, especially if you knit it with like a sport weight or a DK weight, it would be giant. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we can just cover both of ourselves up with it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I, and I love the feel of the linen quill as yeah. well. The um, squishiness. The squishiness, the garter. You guys know, if you watched our earlier episodes, I have very strong opinions about garter stitch gauge. Um, so I <laughs> knit this on a size two um, needle and I'm very happy with the gauge. Um, it's like stretchy enough, but not like super gapey holes. Um, and here's how my picked up wraps look, which I'm pretty proud of. I think I did a pretty good job with that. Um, so yeah, all in all, I'm quite pleased with it and I haven't really worn it yet cause it hasn't been cold enough here. I mean, it's like cool today, but it's not really cold enough for a giant blanket yeah. scarf. Yeah. So, uh, we'll just put that to the side now that I've shown up, but, <laughs> but you've it. gotten to wear it, right? Uh, I haven't worn not it at yet. all. Okay. No. Yeah. Um, I do really want to make another one just because they're so fun to make. Yeah. So but, it, it, it does live up to the hype from your perspective. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely recommend it. Um, and I think it would be a great, like, if you have just some, like, fingering weight yarn mm-hmm. in your stash that you don't know what to do with, you don't want to make a sweater with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it doesn't Go have to be it. linen quill. It could be any yeah, yarn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, every time I see one of those, I, you know, I'm so jealous and I love seeing the color combinations Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, we don't know. We'll see what happens. (laughs) And then do you want to share what you're Um, wearing? Is this hand knit? I'm going to wait because I wore it because of one of my whips that you don't know about yet. Okay. I'll share it. Yeah. Okay. This is hand knit though, but I'll share it later. All right. So we have some more suspense going for you all. (laughs) Okay, so what I'm wearing is my FO. I think it was done but not blocked last episode. You all have seen this a lot, but it is the Lodestar pullover. This was in Pom Pom, right? Um, um, yeah, the maybe like a fairly recent one. Maybe the autumn one or the summer. I don't remember. Oh, it was, I think it was summer and the themes had, the theme had something to do with flight with or birds. birds. Or flight or something, yeah. yeah. Um, and so... Lodestar Pullover by, I I think it's Kirsten. Knitting at the Movies is her IG handle. And so it's a beautiful pattern. The original version was in a mustardy mm-hmm. yellow, and I was inspired by that. I had this yarn in my stash already. It's 
Julie Aslan in the saffron color. Um, but you all pretty much know it. It's a DK weight. Mm -hmm. If you've been watching, you're aware of it. I feel like I always feel like we're... Now I'm like, I feel like I'm always like rushing to share about things. Like, why am I trying to get things out yeah, of the take way? Yeah, time. You spent a lot of time on this. Like, um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, so I knitted um, US 6 needles. Um, and it was just a fun knit and it mm -hmm. flew by. I'll let you all see it. I have a mustard, you know, favorite color, mustard Ooh, shirt so on underneath. And I guess we're a little close. So yeah. <laughs> you can see. But the fit is perfect. Um, I realized that I like this where there's a little bit of positive mm -hmm. ease. It's just more comfortable. Mm -hmm. There's air to breathe. Mm -hmm. I've worn it one other time. I wore it, la was it last weekend? I crashed, um, my college reunion for like five minutes to pick up a friend um, and it was relatively cool out it was later in the day um what else to say about this i highly recommend it um it's been yeah, a while it looks so great. I'm i was trying rusty. to look oh sorry i was trying to oh. look to see if it looks that different blocked than unblocked but i feel like the only difference is the lace opened up a little bit yeah, yeah. i that's the only thing mm -hmm. it opened up and then there are short rows in the back heather you could probably i don't know if you notice them but i can't tell where they are though. there are yeah. german short rows in the back as well um and then my favorite i i like the twisted rib um ribbing on the cuffs and the bottom so yeah that's the finally get to wear the load star it's just cool enough mm -hmm. where it's it's doable but you know yeah it's where i can wear a knit sweater and i could also have on a t-shirt mm -hmm. on a day like today in the bay area so well it depends what you're doing too it's like the kind of day where you have to take stuff off and on yeah exactly yeah. exactly um i'm liking the sleeve i was wearing um, um now I forget what it's called, but that like kind of cream colored brioche cardigan that I knit recently, Plover, yeah. that's also oh, yeah, a bird. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it has that same like bubble, not like super big bubble, yeah, but a little bit of a, a bubble bit, sleeve a and I really it, yeah. like that, yeah. And I think the pattern calls for it to be a tiny bit shorter than this, not quite sh um, three quarters, but shorter. And I, I did, I made it longer um, just because it's just more wearable mm -hmm. for me to have full-length sleeves for the most part so. yeah especially in a sweater that in a dk or worsted weight yeah it's like why would you have a exactly yeah exactly yeah. oh god i really am rusty <laughs> <Yeah. I'm> like... <laughs> well i'm not used we're not used to sitting next to each other either yeah. right it's like we're usually yeah so. and i and i finished it a while you know i did finish it a while ago so just trying to remember the details of it and that hint hint you should write notes wanda yeah that would probably <laughs> help but here we are well anyway <laughs> um do you have any other fo's i don't nope i've been pretty monogamous not monogamous because the same couple of projects mm -hmm. but i have yeah. a hoe that i think i'll share i was debating whether or not i'll share it. but okay. i know you have more fo's so share i do so what happened is so i finished this i don't remember when but quite a while like very shortly after we last recorded i think um and then I saw on Instagram somewhere, somebody doing like a year end whip down. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me who, don't ask mm -hmm. me who started it. Don't ask me what the hashtag is. I don't know any of that information. <laughs> I just remember that it was the last hundred days and it was like okay. finishing up your projects. It was actually, a, I think a cross stitch account. So I actually have quite a few cross stitch whips also because cross stitch is small. It doesn't take up a lot of space. Yep, so it yep, just like yep. accumulates. So I made a list of all my cross stitch and knitting whips mm -hmm. and I had, I have a, I did take notes about this. I had 21 cross stitch whips and I had 12 knitting whips. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, it's a hundred days from whatever the first day was. And I split it into 10 day increments with a goal of finishing one project for each every 10 days, which sounds like a lot, but it isn't because a lot of the cross stitch projects are like two days away from being finished. Got it, so it's got like, it. why? It's a Why reasonable aren't they done, right? Goal. Yeah. Um, so the first three 10 day things have passed. So I have finished three cross stitch projects and wow. knitting projects. Wow. Okay. Um, so I have those here. Um, so the first knitting project I finished was these socks, which were almost done. So it was an easy win. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so this is my second pair of the cantaloupe socks. <laughs> we didn't plan this, but it's a perfect, it's perfect between both of them. Oh yeah, right now. it is. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, it's our color scheme. Mm -hmm. So um, these are, I knit another pair of these for myself and then these are for my mom. Um, so these are cantaloupe socks. The yarn is called Cantaloupe by Tiny Human Knits. Um, and then this blue is some kind of cascade leftover that I had. Um, yeah, so I finished those. And then the first cross-stitch project I finished, which was also like extremely close to being done, um, is this. Oh, that's gorgeous. Um, so it looks so great. Cross-stitch, I feel I like in some ways looks better on camera. <laughs> for um, but this is called Homely House Plants. And I think the designer is Stitch on me, but I could be wrong. I'll put it in the description box. Huh. Um, this one yeah. makes me want to cross-stitch. Yeah. So I'm, I I love it. I have a vision of where I'm going to put it yeah. in my apartment, kind of up on top of my shelves that if you've watched our Zoom videos, that like white shelving I have that has some like art on the top, I'm going to put this up there with Perfect. That. Um, yeah, so I'm super excited. This is, you know, the, one of the great things about cross-stitch is it can be oh, really so inexpensive beautiful. if you want it to be. Like this is a DMC floss, so, and it's not actually that many colors. So there's probably like $10 worth of thread in there. And then the fabric, this fabric was super inexpensive too. So anyway, so that's Homely House Plants. Sweet. Um, then I finished um, this, which I would have been wearing today, except it needs to be blocked. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the Flutter Butt Shirt um, by Jessie May. And it's done. It's done. Um, you can see it has a little peplum. And the original design has a pep, like a flutter sleeve mm -hmm. also, um, but I'm not really into the flutter sleeve. So I just did, picked up and did a couple um, rounds of rib and mm -hmm. bound off. Um, but I had wet blocked the swatch and I thought I had accounted for like how much it grows in wet blocking when mm -hmm. I knit it. But then I tried it on before blocking and I actually like how it fits now. So I don't want to wet block it because I think it's going to get too big. Uh, oh yeah. That's why you asked me. For yeah. Okay. So I don't have a steamer, but want to yeah, have a steamer. Yeah, I'll look for that. Before you... <laughs> so I asked if I could borrow her steamer to steam block it and then I probably will wear it sometime soon. I feel like I could wear it with a little like t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt underneath it too. Probably. Oh yeah. Um, and try out different outfits. It's a great color. Yeah. Good for this time of year. Yeah. Did you say what needles you use? Um, what size? I don't remember what size needles. I want to say it would probably like, uh, I know I use my interchangeable, Ooh, so it's like nice a too. three or a four probably. And you use the same the whole way through. The whole way through the same needle. And um, it is Barocco remix light mm -hmm. which i'm kind of obsessed with this yarn they have cool colors yeah. too um it's nice and it just was really i really to be, I, if i'm being honest i don't know how much i'll actually end up wearing this yeah. but i really enjoyed knitting it well so, hey process yeah. um yeah i think well, looking at this and i'm also looking mm -hmm. at the pearl soho linen quill one thing i've realized about yarn is that i like where there's just kind of this definition, whether it's like he heathery mm -hmm. or tweedy, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm noticing that I'm drawn to those types of yarn. So yeah, no, where it's not flat, like this, um, the mm -hmm. this blue stuff is just really flat, mm -hmm. right? There's no, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. And yours, that's kind of well, it's not. Well, it's like tonal. That yeah, one. this yeah. one's tonal. Um, okay, so I finished that. The next thing I finished, cross stitch wise was these Christmas um, cat ornaments. I get to see them in person. And I did post this on my personal Instagram, which is Heather T3. I don't think I said that at the beginning. And I did save the highlight in my stories of how I finished them. Cause I, oh, yeah. I there are these, well, I'll show you one of them. So this is one of them. And the designer of these is Doreen Jones. And I bought the pattern on her Etsy shop. Um, so, they're just little Christmas cat so fun. Christmas ornaments. Um, on the pattern, she has them all stitched together on like a piece of fabric, but mm. I did them on this brown perforated paper. And then I um, got spray adhesive and just like laid them all face down and spray adhesive um, like origami paper to the back. Oh, um, that's what you 
were yeah. doing. So that was the project that I did where I had to like open the door that we're not supposed to open yeah. in my apartment building. Um, so originally my plan was to cut them out. So like this mm. one was one of the first ones I made. Um, but then I actually realized that I liked them better when mm -hmm. they were more, so this, you know, either rounded or squared off. So yeah, there's that guy. There's a whole bunch of them. The kitties. They're just really cute. And I'm not even really a cat person. That's yeah. what Wanda said when she saw it. She's like, you don't even like cats. I'm like, well, but these are really cute. But you can like cross stitch kitty right. ornaments. Exactly. <laughs> these cats don't shed fur all over my house and <laughs> knock things down and try to eat my yarn. They do more than that. <laughs> okay, just a quick kitties, all the last ones. Um, and they all have different paper on the back, but just to make Cute. them so when you hang them up, they, they look okay when they spin around. Yeah, yeah, that was so, brilliant. My plan is to just attach these to like the top of people's Christmas packages this year. And, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I love it. So those were super close to being done too. They just needed like a little bit of back stitching and then they needed to have the paper sprayed on them. Okay, two more. The next knitting whip I finished was Musselberg. Um, this is a pattern by Isolde T. Yeah. yeah. And it's the My Leftover Yarn from My Twigs, mm -hmm. um, which is a Sweet Sparrow Yarns one of a kind color. Um, and I just saw noticed on Instagram that apparently there's some kind of like Musselberg middle. I don't know. I think like, I may have seen that too. Yeah. And I didn't even know that. Yeah. So I'm accidentally with the cool kids, but this is my Musselberg. You can wear it like this. Team Musselberg. It's also, oh, I, I should have grabbed mine. Just. Yeah. To, like, we could have. Yeah. We could. Yeah. One of these days we can wear them together. Yeah. Um, I did block it. It's still a tiny bit smaller than I thought it would be. So I'm thinking about reblocking it and putting it like over mm, a plate to little. try to stretch it a little yeah. bit. But um, it all depends on what fit you like. Yeah, what fit you want. Yeah, I mean it fits for sure. It does fit. But um, anyways, and I was very happy it's a with good it. Color. I had yeah. exactly one ball of yarn left, and I actually ran out before it was long enough, so uh, I had to add a little bit of. And it's totally fine with yarn how that's designed. Inside. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, it was super fun to knit just around and around and around, knit, and around and around and around and around. What did we say? Was that the equivalent of like a, two pairs of socks? I think it was the equivalent of about mm -hmm. two pairs of socks if you use mm -hmm. the full skeins. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like a hundred grams of, it was a hundred grams of the, this yarn and then a tiny bit of the other. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I also did knit it at a tighter gauge and the pattern says, Oh that yeah, that's usual. the thing yeah. about the the pattern. It, you have options depending mm -hmm. on the yarn you use and the gauge that you're mm -hmm. getting, right? And figuring out your sizing. So which size did you make? Um, I ended up making the large. Um, oh, yeah, it's really yeah. nice because you could just start with any yarn and then you can see. And, and, yep. um, but I realized that the gauge I was getting was smaller than the smallest gauge in the pattern. So I um, knit the large and I actually even made, did a few more increase rounds. So it actually has more stitches even got than it. is recommended for the large. But, you know, I did like math yeah. of some kind. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Um, and then my last FO is another cross stitch one. Um, this is an alphabet one called A Little Quakeresque by mm. Blue Ribbon Designs. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So I have a bunch of alphabet patterns and I'm thinking about getting them framed and taking them to work to hang up in my I office. was literally going yeah. to ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, for anybody who's new, I work at an elementary school, so it's yep. appropriate. But yeah, this is a nice relaxing because it's just the one color and yeah are there times you found yourself gravitating more to cross stitch versus knitting um yeah there are i mean it just depends on like what project i'm really into i mm -hmm. think and that's kind of why i had all these unfinished projects because with cross stitch i tend to like work on something for like a week or so and then i get tired of it and i put it away mm -hmm. and then what i end up with is a ton of projects that are half finished so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. those um, whip downs really i mean <laughs> They seem to work for you because yeah. you, we had one, right? Yeah. And that significantly, I think you got through all of your whips in that one. No? I did. I got through all the ones from 2020. From 2020. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, all right. speaking of whips. Show us some of your stuff. I was talking for a while. <laughs> all right. So, 
whip. I'll sh I guess I'll just go in the order in which I can grab them right now. This is my first whip. Ooh. Oh, I, I meant to play. I meant yet. to play the guessing game with you again. Like, <laughs> well, you did tell me you were gonna. Yeah, this. yeah. like guess what but I'm I just haven't making. Seen it yet. I'm just trying to. Oh, I love that yarn. It's so fuzzy. Here, oh, it looks so oh, it's so good. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so I've ventured into color work. This is color. Mm -hmm. This is like I did a hat and you know whatever, but stranded color work. So this is. Mm, it looks really good on camera. Oh, this mm -hmm. is so exciting. Anyway, this is hello's hello from my colors top. Um, it's a recent pattern by Jesse Maid mm -hmm. Design, um, and once I saw it, I was like. I want to make that and I've been contemplating a color work top for mm -hmm. a while and this is the one that finally made me dive mm -hmm. in so I ordered the yarn it's Knit Picks palette um and oh, then it is really this is Knit Picks palette yeah. I guess I haven't used palette in a while I forgot it was that fuzzy and can I, I that say yeah. that I love this yarn <laughs> it's been a joy and I'm touching it now because I'm like <laughs> this feels so good and it's been a joy to knit with it's so it's it's mm -hmm. delicious and i think when i was mentioning the type of yarn i'm finding myself drawn to it's the palette right mm -hmm. because they have there's heatheriness but then there's like mm -hmm. multi multiple mm -hmm. tones in the colors okay so where were we because you were saying uh we were texting the other day about how you are looking have been looking at a lot of jameson and smith yarn which okay. is the same it's very so, similar to palette so i'm excited the colors. yeah so almost like every other day <laughs> i've been on the jameson and smith or woolly thistle website looking at jameson and smith yarn and i want to buy like every single color even colors that are not really in my color scheme. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is, we'll come back to it. I know. Okay. Tangent. Okay. Sorry. All right. Tell so should what? I talk about the top or the, the yarn, the colors? Well, both. Oh, it matches your bag too. Everything matches today. <laughs> I'm in my zone. <laughs> You're in your zone. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So let's go with color. So Knit Picks palette. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to remember. I have this it's one some already. Some kind of rusty brown. It's a rusty brown. <laughs> this is the bouquet. Yeah. But this is what you mean because it has purple, but it also has like it more has of the brown. some of right. this yeah. color in it. I don't mm -hmm. know if you all can see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And this is where we're I, having a purple moment right now. Too. We are. Mm, hold that thought. We are. <laughs> So anyway. I wasn't, and I can't, I, if I had prepared notes, I could tell you all, but I was inspired by someone um, who had kind of not as dra dramatic color, mm -hmm. like in the color palette. And you all know, I like the rusty autumn, autumn mm -hmm. wool colors, but this one was a little bit of a, like, mm -hmm. I was like going, I was thinking maybe I should have done a bright orange or something. <laughs> no, but it needs But it. I like it. it. Yeah, it I needs, like it. It needs that, like, different, I don't know enough about art to tell you what the and color word is. there was another, yeah. there, and I have the yarn because I bought mm -hmm. it. There was, I should have brought it down. But there was another, like, bluish, almost teal color that I was considering instead of this. But I went with that one. Um, so love the yarn. Now I'm just gonna sit here and pet the <laughs> so nice. Um, anyway, it's a hundred percent Highland wool, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so what about this top? Rolled neckline, um, and then the charts are super easy to read. I realize that it's easy to keep track of your place with color work mm -hmm. because the color changes act as a guide, right? Mm -hmm. And you just flow at mm -hmm. you know every time we've been talking about color work i've been like oh it's probably going i'm probably going to be super slow at it but it it kind of just it becomes intuitive mm -hmm. what else there are there is short row shaping on the back as well mm -hmm. german short rows she suggests you use a range of needle sizes so i cast it on and did the neckline with i think fours um i went down even further here i did us threes mm -hmm. on here and then the color work i used us six and the the parts that are straight stock and that mm -hmm. i use a us five for um and it's worked out she you know i'm using the interchangeable chalgo needles so i just yeah, detach just take them off the one and yeah yeah and so you know i have a there's also two options, crop top or full length. Um, 
And at first I was doing the full length. I think I'm doing a combination between the full length mm -hmm. and the crop. I keep going back and forth between the charts and looking at how long each section is and kind of making a decision based on how I assume it's going to look. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's always that fear that it's going to be too short. Um, but, but since it's top down, that's easy to fix. You can just rip back the ribbing and add more. Yeah, right? add more ribbing yeah. or just exactly add another color work to add another something. Yeah. something. I think that's it. Is there anything else that I should be sharing? No, but it looks so great. Yeah, I'm it's so interesting excited. holding it up because yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to like this one. And this is the second size, I think. Mm -hmm. Second or third size, I can't remember. But Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. And that'll be nice, too, to wear with, like, a um, long sleeve t-shirt or something under yep, it if you it want can, to for the winter. Kind of I like think it ha it'll style. have that versatility. Yeah either mm -hmm. yeah all right nice finger weight fingering weight yarn excellent yeah i had a question in my mind to ask you and now i forgot it'll probably come to me later halfway through oh and thanks for holding thing. my yarn that whole time <laughs> i was gonna have to just take it home with me <clears throat> um what was i gonna say yeah it's gone it's gone it might come back it might come back we can yeah. revisit it <laughs> Uh, well, I'm glad the color work bug has bitten you and now, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to ask. I was going to ask if you, I know last time you knit color work on a hat, you're holding both the yarns in your left hand. Are mm. you still doing that? Or have you switched to doing one yarn in each hand? I'm still doing both in one hand. Um, and I, you know, I was looking through videos and one tip I got in one of the videos was on my pointer finger for one of the yarns. I... I wrap it, a, mm -hmm. you know, I basically create a loop and mm -hmm. that allows me to have a little gap between mm -hmm. the two mm -hmm. so that it's easy to pick up mm -hmm. whichever one I need at any particular point in time. Um, but it's interesting when I'm knitting with one color, I transition to holding my finger closer, like on mm -hmm. the needle and that's mm -hmm. better ergonomically. Mm -hmm. And so that's the only thing with color work. I haven't quite figured mm -hmm. out. How to maintain tension and separation between the yarns and still hold my finger right. close to the needles um but when if i figure that out you won't be <laughs> able to stop me anymore. right <laughs> yeah i'm the same i hold my i actually hold my finger with the yarn like right up against my left hand needle mm -hmm. but i knit color work with two hands oh. yeah. um you know that mm -hmm. might be something that's worth practicing but I think, did you already know how that's considered English style? No, I had to teach myself how to do that. Okay. You and did. I'm definitely not as good of an English style knitter, but good enough to make color work look okay. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I think it might be worth ex mm -hmm. worth me exploring that. There's also a little <laughs> gizmo you can buy that you put on your finger that has like two... Um, the loops. Loops to put your yeah. yarn through. And I tried that. Before I learned to knit with my right hand, I um, tried that, but I never could quite get it. I, I saw th yeah. I saw Knit Picks has a, mm -hmm. a has the you know a couple of version of versions of those. I was curious about it, but you yeah. it wasn't for me. I couldn't. I just couldn't. Fig I didn't like the flow of it. Yeah. But um, I I'm sure lots of people. Oh, use yeah. It. yeah I All know. these things are are worth e exploring. So if anyone has any tips for color work. Um, comment below definitely <laughs> do do that <laughs> do that do you, you have whips or? i do okay. i have two uh, um i have two more but one of them uh, you know it's, i don't know i'll show one and then you can show okay. one of yours okay let's do that um so i have this is another one that was in my whip pile i don't know if i've ever shown these on here maybe i have i started them a long time ago and then i don't know why i, I think you aside. may have i do them remember there. them so um so these are some we're doing yeah I remember. rainbow and white helical striped socks um they don't have the heel the little stitch marker here shows where the heel is going to go um so i had most of this one done and then i had put it away for like months i don't really know why so i picked this back up finished this one and then i'm getting Working pretty close through. to being done with this one except for the heel of course as well um and this is that's not what it is <laughs> some kind of yarn hang on <laughs> uh oh here it is 
this is the yarn that I had like cut into little oh. bits and pieces to mm -hmm. make the those color work socks a while ago, which was a, not a wise decision. <laughs> um, and it is West Yorkshire Spinners, but they don't have names for their colors. So it's just kind of kind of rainbow mm. West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. Um, anyway, I'm going to have quite a bit left, I think, after I'm done with the um, socks. So we'll see what else I do with it. Um, but yeah, that's really all there is to say about it. I'm just doing helical knitting and going around and around and around. And what are your thoughts about the helical knitting process? Um, I I really like it for alternating skeins, like on a sweater or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't mind it for socks. Like I really like the little micro stripe that it, you know, where you have one stripe of one color and one stripe of the other color. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like it to get that effect, and it definitely makes that smoother because otherwise you'd have a jog between every row yeah, which got wouldn't, it. wouldn't look very good yeah. um i don't find it as like relaxing because you do have to manage both balls of yarn and so i think that's why i had put these aside because i think i mm -hmm. started them and then i went on vacation and i didn't want to deal with all the multiple yeah. balls of yarn yeah. so i put them aside um, but I really do like it for using up like leftovers and stuff too. Yeah, that makes sense. So I mean, I like that concept of what you did with yeah. the, the self striping yarn. Um, a new way, different way to use it. Yeah, exactly. It kind of breaks up the blocks of color. Like yeah. I for I mean, I guess it would. I'm sure it would look great with the regular stripes as well. Mm -hmm. But there's just it tones it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I like that fact. Yeah. So anyways, these should be done quite soon. These are actually not the project that I have scheduled to be my next whip that I finish, but oh. I don't think I'm going to finish that one on time by the next 10 day deadline. But this so one you this will. One might, so they might get substituted. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. What else do you have? All right. Another big surprise. <gasps> you want to guess? Um, is it a garment? Mm -hmm. I actually have no idea. Okay, so this is another item that we spoke about a while ago. Okay. Is it a cardigan or a pullover? It's a pullover. It's a pullover. Is it purple? Oh my goodness, it's purple. You all, it's purple. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can... <laughs> Rachel, are you watching? Both of us are into purple now. Well, purple, when I was younger, it was my favorite color. <laughs> all right, get ready for this. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Oh, it's the um, cozy, is it the cozy classic... Mm -hmm. No, what is it? It's something fluffy. So I'm doing the sleeves two at a time, so it might be a bit hard to see. What is it? Oh, this is the back. I don't know what it's Let called, but I it. do remember seeing that pattern. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at it. Oh my gosh, what is that? Now I might need to make it. All the suspense. It's so fluffy. <laughs> it feels, I love that color too. It it's um, delicious. So I had this yarn in oh, my stash. So and I, you know, I had, I was like, I don't know. I was thinking I wanted a way to use my mohair. I have mohair and mustard. Am I in the middle of, anyway. <laughs> don't you might have Let me to pull this sort that out later yeah i have mohair and mustard as well and i've been sitting on my my mohair mm -hmm. you know mohair held with fingering mm -hmm. right and so there are a couple of things we've discussed making before and then i was searching and looking and i had texted you about this one i, I know you did I, the pattern looks really familiar this, to me but i can't think of what it is this is called the i don't i'm not going to pronounce it right it's called the ula sweater mm -hmm. Um, by Gregoria Fibers. Oh, right. Okay. And so I, I mean, if you all have been watching, you kind of know my aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Like I like, um, ribbing mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. and lines and mm -hmm. angular stuff. <laughs> right. It reminds me of the, um, what's the poison girl? Yes. Oh, the V. Yeah. The yeah. um, Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and this, when it blocks, it's going to, the mm -hmm. neck would be a little bit wider. But anyway, so I had texted Heather because I was like, I love this sweater. I was look, I think I this said. This is the one with the okay. pattern. You had questions about the pattern. Yes. Okay, okay, I remember. And so yeah. on our, I think it was our last podcast, I actually said I was thinking of making the love note. And this mm -hmm. is what I was, this yarn okay. combination. But I was also just looking for other options. And this one, I kept coming back mm -hmm. to it. 
And initially I wasn't going to make it because there were comments on the pattern about just ch challenges people were having. Um, and then I took that into consideration. And again, I can't, I have it on the pattern because I wrote my notes and how I was adjusting things, but mm -hmm. I just did a different stitch count to adjust and try to account for the sizing. The first time I cast on the neck, it was too tight. So mm -hmm. I went up maybe like okay. eight stitches or something like that. It's a, is it tubular? Tubular mm -hmm. cast on, which was, you know, it's a little bit mm -hmm. of work, but a new. It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. And it was a new skill for me. And honestly, the pattern was fine for me. Mm -hmm. I've tried this on. It fits fine. Um, you know, again, I considered whatever adjustments, but for, but other than like, changing some of my numbers i i was able to follow the pattern just fine and i love it and can't wait to finish oh yeah it looks so um, great so i actually was working on this before mm -hmm. i cast on cast it on hello from my colors mm -hmm. hello from my colors top um and when i so i finished the body the body's mm -hmm. all done so similar it looks like a similar shape to the sweater you're wearing is well, it it's no? meant to be, and this is a little bit shorter than it's supposed to be, but this okay. is meant to have a longer ribbing. Um, so I think I did maybe four, four and a half inches, and I think it's supposed to be five and a okay. half inches of ribbing. And then same with the sleeves, it's a long ribbing. So I'm almost done with the pure stock and net on the sleeves, but I'm knitting the sleeves two at a time. And so I started getting a little bored with um, mm -hmm. the stock and net. And so when I got my yarn for Hello's from Hello from My Colors, I was like, oh, I'm going to cast that on. And yeah. then I started flying on that. And this this has been sitting. But mm, am I really not? Like, I have two stitches on a row Yeah, here. I know. That's why. Oh, anyway. But so, yeah, sleeves two at a time. And I'm actually. I just need to put all these colors. That's the true. Oh, yeah. And I have to tell you all about the okay. yarn, too. <laughs> I'm actually, I had started out, I think the collar, I don't know, using my Chiago, and then I switched to these Licka needles because it was really slippery and I noticed mm. I was cramping. And then when I switched to this, I was like, this mohair fingering weight combo mm -hmm. is really good for, I think it's, what mm -hmm. is it, driftwood? Mm -hmm. Stickier ne it needs a, a wooden needle. Yeah, yeah, a wooden needle. And it's just, it's been a comfortable, enjoyable knit since I made that switch. I made that while I was still on the body. Um, what else to say about this? I think that's it for now. And then the yarn. So I don't know if you remember when we went to Stitches. Mm -hmm. Do you remember I was looking for um, kind of like a few magenta, fuchsia? I do vaguely, and, yeah. And there was one by that brand that mm -hmm. you had gotten my socks Dragon, from. Dragonfly Fibers, yeah. yeah. And so I don't remember when after that. I had, I was roaming, I think it may have been when they were having that sale. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting this mm -hmm. and you know, I bought it online mm -hmm. so you couldn't really, I had no idea how this combination mm -hmm. was going to end up looking, but this is from Cloudborn. Oh, okay. This is their Merino mm -hmm. Superwash. 100% wool? Or is it the sock I that has nylon? I think it's the, it has, it has nylon. It has, it has nylon. polyamide. Poly What's the difference between polyamide don't and ask, nylon? Don't, don't, I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know. If y'all know, you can let yeah. us know. I'm trying to see what color this was. Oh, yeah. It's magenta. Okay. Magenta. So, yeah. <laughs> and then I had, and again, this is the yarn that was in my stash. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you yeah. knit things together, you never know. This mm -hmm. is the mohair, and it's knit. It looks so great when you combine and it, so, even though they're so different. They're so different. But it, combined, it just looks awesome. It, it yeah. works. And it makes it, even though this is, again, like we were saying, it's a, more of a flat color. Yep. But when you combine it, it's like see, feathery and amazing. And I love close. this Knit Picks mohair. It's, lo it, yeah. it's lovely, and it's economical, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's that, y'all. And then you can see this is. Can We're not see? sponsored by Nitpicks, but. Oh, yeah, this is. Nitpicks, let us know. True. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, like, we're talking about Nitpicks a lot today. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I should probably figure out what this was. Um, I think that might be it about this for now.
Nice. Oh, that's the, that Knit Picks Aloft is like, it's called mm -hmm. Mera or Mera or something. Do I have a tag? Mirth. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's a good name for that tag. color. It's a happy color. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Awesome. You're going to be set for the winter sweaters. I know. I'm yeah. Like, I was, you, you know, I was prepared this year. <laughs> Not intentionally, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's just what strikes you. Yeah. 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 All right, well, I'll show you my last. Uh, my last project is a sweater pattern um, by Hohi Locatelli. So that's oh. why I wore this. Um, so this is a long, long time ago, like probably almost a year ago, we got a question in the comments about what sweaters we wear the most. Mm -hmm. um, so since I'm knitting this other Hohi sweater, I was like, I'm going to wear this one because this is probably my most worn cardigan. I wear it all the time. I wear it to work like probably once a week. So this nice. is um, Like a Cloud by Hoagie oh, Locatelli. Oh, I've heard of that one, yeah. And I don't know, you're gonna be able to see, but it's it's like a long line cardigan. Mm -hmm. It has an open front and it has like a, kind of a waffle basket weavy type stitch pattern. I don't remember anymore exactly what stitch pattern it is. Um, but this cardigan was like super, super popular. I that you're cut off. I realize your arm is oh, cut that's off. that's okay. okay. Um, is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, this cardigan was like super, super popular. I don't know, three, four, five years ago, a while ago. And I remember, so a lot of people were knitting it on Ravelry, on Instagram, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I always kind of thought, I don't understand why everybody's so into that cardigan. Like, <laughs> whatever, you know, I'm not going to do it just because everyone's doing it. <laughs> and I had this, um, this is a, so Classic Elite, which I think has gone out of business now, but mm -hmm. they had this alpaca lace yarn. Um, and our old, um, local yarn store, Article Pract, had a sale room and they had like a bag of this. So it was like 10 skeins of this mm. lace weight yarn. And I really liked this color. So I just bought it and I had it in my stash. And then just like all of a sudden one day, this was probably like two years after this pattern was really popular. I was like looking at this yarn and I was like, if I have that double, I can make like a cloud. And then I just like knit it in like two weeks. <laughs> um, and I have been wearing it constantly ever since. So it's just kind of, it fits really well. Mm -hmm. It goes, I think this color goes with everything. Other people might disagree with me. I mean, it's working. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, it's, and it's, um, you know, like all Hohi Locatelli well, patterns, see. it's very well written. Goes with yeah, that. Goes with that. Goes with this color. Goes, goes with my, yeah. Um, very well written pattern and easy to follow and et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, mm. this is my most worn cardigan. What are you making now? So now I'm making, this is another one. And I guess it's just like, because her patterns are so popular, they just like get in your head, I guess. <laughs> this is another <laughs> one that came out a while ago. Um, it's, I wish I had a picture of it. It's the uh, Aimé cardigan, because it was originally designed with La Bien Aimé yarn. Um, and it's like a color blocked cardigan. So I don't know why I'm just talking. Let me just get it out and show you because I'm almost done with it. Um, so it's a color block cardigan. It has five colors. And I saw, I don't know what got it in my head this time around, but I saw it in my queue or something. I hate autocorrect. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I just got to thinking that it would be really good to use some stash yarn for because it has five color blocks. So it's originally knit with sport weight. Mm -hmm. But I picked five skeins of fingering. <laughs> I'm liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> I picked five skeins of fingering that made like a nice color progression. I have to be a little bit careful because I'm in a weird spot. Um, so I'll show you this side because it you can see most clearly what it's going to look like. So it's a cardigan and it starts, it has five colors and that's the same on the sleeve. Um, and... I'm on the button band now, so I'm in kind of like a weird place for showing it. That you apply the button band afterwards. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm very close to being done. I just have to finish this like applied button band. So I'll tell you the yarns, That's and then I'll tell you awesome. why I'm worried. Did it's you not hold? Be done oh, soon. were you able to hold it up? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there we go. I think I just need it. So it's pretty wide. Um, oh, I love these yeah. colors. And it's like a V-neck. So eventually it's going to look like this. Um, 
It looks kind of small right now, but it's going to grow a lot because it's fingering weight, and I knit it on, like, a larger needle than I normally knit fingering weight on, so it's going to be a little bit oversized. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I love these colors. So this, well, I have them. Do I have the tags in here? Wait, it's called the what? How do you spell uh, it? M-A-A-I-M-E-E, -E, like Amy from Naughty oh. M-A. Um, so this pink is a serendipitous wool color that I had had in my stash for a while and thought was really pretty and wanted oh, to sorry. do something with. And it is mm. the Vajra base and it's Polka Dot Sea Star is the name of the colorway. Mm, I love that. <laughs> so that's this one. Um, there's pretty. quite a bit of that left, but I have to do quite a lot of the, of the whole back of the neckband with it. So mm. um, I like that. And then... The next color, the rest of it is all Madeline Tosh single skeins that I had in my stash. So there's this one. I don't know what that's called. Uh, it's not that one. Um, Antique Lace is that one. Oh, actually, this is not Madden Blood. This is Knit Picks. <laughs> Hello, Knit Picks. Hello, Knit Picks. Um, this is Knit Picks Hawthorne, and the color is Portsmouth. But I thought it was a really nice I like that transition color between a lot. these. Yeah. And see, again, mm -hmm. that variegation in mm -hmm. there. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah. And all of these are a little bit variegated, mm -hmm. except for the, the black, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is uh, Madeline Tosh Whiskey Barrel, which is a color that I really love. And I've had this yarn forever, but yeah. it's one of those where I was like, wanted to find the perfect thing to do with it. That works it. perfectly. And, yeah. That progression mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. And then the last color, uh, I actually ended up buying this yarn. It's uh, Madeline Tosh Onyx. And I had a different black from my stash that wasn't that was very flat mm. and so I decided I didn't like how that looked with all the variegation mm -hmm. and I so I bought the onyx but the onyx turned out to not be as as variegated or as um tonal as I thought it would be but it's fine I like the uh, effect of that because it's you know it's on the ends it's just um, right kind of grounds it, it. Yeah. yeah there you go um so I'm really excited about it um I like it I, mm -hmm. I'm very excited mm -hmm. about the bag of one. leftovers because I feel like it'll make a nice pair of socks, like with the same yep. striping pattern. Oh, that's perfect. Um, but what I'm worried about is, so the way you make this is so actually kind of similar to how you make like a cloud. So you start, I think you knit part of the back first and then you pick up from the shoulders and knit down the fronts. And then eventually you join it up here at the underarm and keep going. Mm -hmm. And then you knit the sleeves um, afterwards. And then you apply the, the button band. So she says in the pattern to do the button band on smaller needles because so that your button band doesn't get all sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm worried that it's actually on too small of needles because I know that the uh... stockinette... And I could have, I guess, blocked it before I started, but... I didn't want to do that because mm. I don't know why, but, um, so I'm trusting Hohe <laughs> and I will block it. And if it, the button band is too small, then I guess I'll just rip it out and do it again. It's not yeah. like the end of the world, but so, what yeah. I got it. Because right now it's perfect, but I do know that the stock yeah. is going to grow we'll quite see. a bit. Yeah, you'll see. So we'll see. I like but, it a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm trying to find, well, I, I have a cardigan, but I like this one too. Yeah. And I think if it was knit in the, the called for sport weight, I think it would be kind of like cushier. Mine's going to be a little drapier because I'm knitting it with fingering, but at the same gauge. So yeah, that's a good picture of the, what it looks like when it's done. Gonna... Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. You, you caught on too quickly. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, I like these colors. And that's all I have to say about that. I like those colors too. Yeah. And I am going to pull up the picture that of it <laughs> right now. Her sample is more like more vibrant colors in some ways, but you can see that it's like a little bit oversized and mm -hmm. v-necked, yeah. And the buttons. So. Cool. Anyhow. 
That's what I've been working on. Well, that's a lovely surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Inspiring the the cardigans. Yeah. Um, I'll show one more. I'm not going to speak about it too much, but it's a half object. Um, the ends are not woven in because. I got overwhelmed. This is next on my list of things to finish but after I finish these two things. So speaking of, <laughs> again, trying to be ready this year, mm -hmm. every, well, every year since I've been back knitting, I've been like, oh, I want some mittens. Um, the ends aren't woven in and they mm -hmm. haven't been blocked. And I finished these before I, definitely before I cast it on Hello From My Colors. Um, and it actually gave me the color work bug. Mm -hmm. But these don't look that great, so I'm gonna make I this. Think they look fine. I'm gonna make the okay. second ones and and block these and see, see how I okay. feel. But um, there's some bunching up mm -hmm. and such. But well, that's the problem I had with mine too, which is why they're in my whip pile and I have to go back. And I fix think it. I'm gonna follow her directions. I started mm -hmm. doing it towards I don't know at some point, but I don't know. I'm gonna because she has you. You're not. I mean, I know you talked mm -hmm. about mittens and. Um, catching floats mm -hmm. and she doesn't have you really catch mm -hmm. your floats and so I think when I knit the other ones I'm gonna try that but we'll see how these block out and if not I'll have to rip these out and redo them mm -hmm. they knit it up so fast. I'm like why yeah. have I not mm -hmm. made these or made mittens because mm -hmm. they go so quickly and I'm talking about it and haven't even these are the wee mittens by Einar Broken, Broken by mm -hmm. Yeva Mama's Teddy mm -hmm. Bear um, and this is the inside again. I haven't, um, mm -hmm. woven in the ends yet, but, um, Cloudborn, mm -hmm. Highland Wool, 100%. Mm -hmm. Sport weight, right? Sport weight. Yeah. These feel lovely as mm -hmm. well. What else do I have to say about these? I don't know. That's it. This was the first time actually I did the, I mean, I guess it resembles yeah. when you're doing a afterthought heel, mm -hmm. right? So this is an afterthought mm -hmm. thumb. And so I was like, oh, that's totally doable. <laughs> Something else. Why haven't I done that? <laughs> so, yeah. I, will... I think after you block it, it's going to, yeah, definitely block it because it's going to even out a lot when you block it. Yeah. So we'll yeah. just see. But I'll have mittens finally. Yay. And I have, those are next on my list of things that are like next closest to being Perfect. finished. So, I'm, yeah. Um, but mine are in, I think in a little bit of a thinner yarn. So I need to, but okay. I have a question about the floats though. Can I see the mitten? <laughs> I don't want to talk. That's a sore no, be, spot no, on, because this is on. the problem I had when I started knitting it. So I normally would not catch my floats. Mm -hmm. I don't usually catch floats just in general. Mm -hmm. However, um, down here, like right by the edge, when I wasn't catching them, oh. they were like hanging out of the bottom of the mitten. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I and feel that, like you have to catch and them I, down there. At and the I was, and that's the thing, actually. That's interesting because I was catching them down there. And yeah, I mean. I don't know. But so I don't know what to do besides to catch. And I guess unless you were to go back later maybe and like super, tack it down. Yeah. Or just do it. Soup. I mean, you just got to be really intentional, I guess. I mean, it's interesting because it doesn't look, it seems to look worse. It seems to look better down, down at the bottom yeah. where I was. I well, because know. it's more even, because the problem I had is I stopped catching my floats, and then oh. this side was bunchier than that side because of the, yeah. like, this side where you're going every other one was smaller, narrower mm -hmm. than this side where I wasn't catching the floats, even though it's the same amount of stitches and it looked weird. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because just when you are ha are changing colors more often, it tightens. Yeah. So that, to me, is a reason to catch the floats. Or else I just need to leave This side out. looks know. good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways. So we'll, we'll see how our we mittens. Heather's will be done next episode. Well, maybe we'll see. <laughs> I Unfortunately, all the rest of the stuff I have to finish still, besides the wee mittens, mm -hmm. I have the Morgan cardigan, which is like actually pretty close to being done. I oh, have that's the that purplish. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and the wee mittens, but then I have Astragal, which is also by Einar Birkin by Eva, where I think I used the wrong yarn and it's too small and I have to do a lot of math. Hmm. My pin tuck t-shirt, which I hmm. don't know why I haven't finished that. There's nothing wrong with it. I just mm -hmm. got tired of it. Um, my shifty. 
I'm returning to that. That's on my radar too. <laughs> and my piece of silver, which I basically have to oh, rip yeah. both of those out and all the way back up to the yoke yeah. and start again. So yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I might be petering out on my. <laughs> Well, do you, you definitely want to finish both of them, right? Um, piece of silver, I definitely want to finish, but I do have to completely rip that out because of the weird color blocking thing that yeah. happened on the body. Shifty, I don't know. I mean, I like it, but I, part of me is just like, I just Too need to call work. it a day. Maybe <laughs> rip it out, let it sit, come yeah. back to it. In 2022. Down the line. Yeah. With the, just some freshness. Yeah. Um, so I do, do we want, so you, I, I have two future projects. Okay. It's getting dark, but I mean, sharing That's those okay. really yeah. quickly. Um, speaking about Cardigan, I was looking back through Ralvary. I, that's still something else in terms of being prepared. I'm like, mm -hmm. a Cardigan is something that I need in my life. And so the issue is that I do want something with buttons and I do want pockets, but the one I settled on doesn't have either one of those. But she does have a version of the pattern. If you buy the other one that has the, you can do the button mm. band. It's a different fit. Mm -hmm. It's the, oh, I said I wanted to talk about this and I'm not prepared to talk about it. Um, what's the name of that cardigan? I bought yarn for it and everything already. Who's the um, designer? Natasha Hornby. Hmm. Oh, um, starts with an L, doesn't it? Oh, the the letho, letho, the yeah. letho, mm -hmm. something else that mm -hmm. one of those popular. So one that has that plays my like games. the color work down the back mm -hmm. and it has some welts or something on it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I I I really mm -hmm. like the aesthetic of that cardigan, and so I bought yarn for it. I don't know, it's a bit of a fiasco because I realized I took the more more difficult route with my yarn um, because I <laughs> I bought um, I went to we were hanging out in San Francisco, so I went to Imagine It. And I had already kind of had this yarn on my radar. It's the fiber company Cumbria, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I bought Cumbria fingering, thinking about holding it with mohair mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. she does hold it with mohair without remembering and thinking, oh, Cumbria comes in worsted and I could have just oh, knit it in yeah. worsted, mm -hmm. no worries about the mohair. But we'll see, I have the fingering and I have mohair for it mm -hmm. as well. So that's on the radar. And then, um, I mean, you didn't bring it, did you? But can we talk about Shetland Trader? Oh, I wish I would have brought it. Yes. So for if you guys have not, I'm sure people have seen because Pom Pom's Instagram has been yeah. spammed with it. But uh, Goodwin Johnson's new book, The Shetland Trader, Volume 3. Mm -hmm. um, we both have it and we're obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. I really want to make the like pinafore tunic. And I actually got out some yarn to swatch with for it, but then I decided I needed to like so hold pause off. until I finished some of <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cause I really want it in a gray, but I have a gold, like this color that mm -hmm. would work. And I think I would still wear it if it was gold. So I think mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go with that. Go with it. Yeah. But which the one that you want to make? I want to make the cover, the cover one, one. and mm -hmm. every, and that's where it was kind of a preview because every other day I'm looking at Jameson and Smith yarn because <laughs> I you know I just it seems like really cool yarn. It's mm -hmm. originally made with it, so I want to get me some Jameson mm -hmm. and Smith yarn, um, and so that's where I'm looking at different color combinations. But I'm I'm like I'm not going to buy it yet. Mm -hmm. um, let me finish one of these. So now I have to make a decision. Things always change, so this might change, but I have two tops, mm -hmm. right? So if I get both of those off, I technically, I mean, I, I have some choices mm -hmm. here. I can cast on the letho and just one. I can cast on the <laughs> letho and I can cast on the vair, mm -hmm. which is the cover um, sweater. And um, so I could do one or the other, or I can pick my shifty back up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so oh, that's what shifty. we're working with here. Yeah. I have a... Um... I have a couple sweaters quantities of Jameson and Smith in my stash mm. that I, one of them is a kit that I bought years ago for an Ella Gordon pattern. I can't remember exactly what the pattern is called, but I've been thinking for a while about making that this winter. Mm -hmm. So if you end up getting Jameson Ooh. and Smith, I might be inspired to do that. Yeah. And then the other is like a lavender color that I got at the used 
craft store. That. Lavender, huh? Um, but <laughs> I want to make a color work cardigan that has a lot of color work. So the lavender is kind of like in the background with, but Got I it. need to make the Ella Gordon kit. So I have the leftovers from that ah, to okay. use in the, okay. yeah. Okay. So this is a long-term plan. People. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it, right. it was nice coming yeah. back and sharing with you all. And we got to catch up yeah. on our knits and now we can chat about them more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's always what happens is we finish recording and then we think of 17 things we should have said, but mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you all for watching. We're excited to be back and sharing our projects. Um, thank you for liking, subscribing, um, leaving us comments. We really appreciate that. And um, we'll see you when we see you. And Oh, wait, should we not make promises? <laughs> uh, we'll see you sometime before the end of 2021. We can promise we that, We can right? promise that for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah, thanks for sticking around with us. <laughs> All right, bye. bye.